All right, should you learn C-sharp in 2019? I'll get to the point. You learn C-sharp if you want to interact with the Microsoft stack. You're going to be writing clients, thick clients for Windows 10. If you're going to be building web-based apps or web apps that are going to be interfacing with back-end Microsoft technologies, you definitely want to do C-sharp and ASP.NET. And you learn C-sharp if you want to get into game programming with Unity as an example. C-sharp is a modern language. It's a very nice language. It was modeled after Java. It's kind of like Java++, if you think about it. So they looked at Java, Microsoft did, and then they built C-sharp and said, okay, this is what we would like to have different about Java. These days, I would imagine C-sharp and Java are neck and neck in terms of features. There are a lot of job opportunities with C Sharp these days. Most of them would be working on uh, .NET architecture, I would imagine, web apps and so forth. If you're going to do C Sharp jobs, you're probably going to be working for larger corporations, which probably means you're going to need some sort of certification or some sort of degree to get those jobs. So if your number one goal in terms of software development is the job prospects. You have to consider what level of education that you have, and then you have to look at what they are asking for. So just look up C-sharp jobs or .NET jobs or Unity jobs, although I think you have less of those. Most of them are gonna be .NET jobs, I would imagine, with C-sharp. And just check out, see what their, their job requirements are. See if they want a higher degree, etc. And uh, then you can make your choice based on that. Now, I'll leave this video with this one thing to consider. I always emphasize, if you, for instance, decided now to learn C-sharp.net, and you get into it, and you got some basic chops with your C-sharp, and then you decide that there's no jobs, or you just don't like this kind of programming, you want to transition to, let's say, JavaScript Node, or PHP Laravel, or Python Django, or something, what, what have you. So you decide at some point, okay, I want to move over to something else. Did you waste all your time learning C-sharp? Not at all, not even close, because all these modern, modern languages, Java, C-sharp, uh, Python, Dart, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, they're all based on the same principles. Some are closer than others, like JavaScript and C-sharp are very close. C-sharp and Java are super close. So, you know, if you learn C-sharp, you've essentially you've learned 80%, 85% of all those other languages I've mentioned. Really, you have. So you're not like you're missing out. You cannot lose when you learn a programming language. So I know people get a little nervous about that. Oh, am I going to choose the right stack? I'm going to choose the right language. Oh, no, what am I going to do? Even if you chose a language, a language where in your part of the world the jobs are not there, or maybe because you don't have the advanced degree, you can't get that Python AI job, doesn't matter. Everything that you learn in Python is transferable to C Sharp, which is transferable to JavaScript, which is transferable to PHP, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So don't sweat it. So there you go. In summary, C Sharp jobs, yep, 219 for sure. Probably going to be in .NET, although C Sharp is used in the Unity framework. That said, I, I'm guessing, depending on the area, many more .NET C Sharp jobs than you get game development jobs. And just a last word about game development. Seems like a lot of fun, seems exciting, but the gaming, game development and coding is pretty rough and tumble in the sense that a lot of people are attracted to the idea of writing games. Seems like a lot of fun. As such, there's a lot more competition there. As such, the jobs are tougher. They work you a lot harder as a game developer. And the fact of the matter is, I have to tell you, when you're writing code, code is code is code is code. Meaning, if you're writing objects and methods and you're writing, you're building architectures for a game, for a game, versus doing this, you know, building architectures, writing methods and uh, functions, etc., for a web app. You're writing methods and functions when you're building architectures. It becomes the same thing. It's kind of when I was in my uh, business, non-tech business, where I used to sell water purification products. And at first I got into it because I was into that, that whole, this, this hobby of mine, which I won't get into here. But after a few years of doing it, people, I told people, you know, I'm selling all these water purification products and all these rare fish and stuff. But at the end of the day, they're just widgets. They could be rolls of toilet paper. As far as 
uh, my business was concerned, as far as my day-to-day work, they were just widgets. It was about how many units I sold, how much profit I made, whether they were, you know, like I said, rolls of toilet paper, or water purification products, didn't really matter in the end. Same thing when you're writing software. Um, methods are methods, functions are functions, variables are variables. You know, it's similar to a certain extent. To a certain extent, I want to go down this rabbit hole too much, but I, again, let me just go back. If you find that the choice you made doesn't lead to work right away, it doesn't matter if those skills that you learned in one language are transferable to the next, so don't sweat it. All right, I hope this makes sense. And uh, if you like this video, like, give me a thumbs up. If you really hate it, give me two thumbs down, show how much you hate it. And uh, if you wanna learn the web stack really quickly, check the links below if you wanna learn from my very popular Python course, check the links below. If you want to be a freelancer, check the links below. Bye-bye.